scripture reading is from Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11, and then it concludes on verse 20. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God. For he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem, and he gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars, and he gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond all measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre, and covers the heavens with clouds. Prepares for rain for the earth, and makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food, and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor the pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, and those who hope in his steadfast love. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Our second scripture is from Mark 1, 29, verses, oh, sorry, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And in the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. And when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues, and casting the demons out. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Today's scripture is about a mother-in-law. And it is unique because she was in the home of her son-in-law. And in that time and era, that would not be as common. Women were property. And so when a woman married into a family, there she remained. So his mother-in-law, technically speaking, should remain with that man's family. But we don't know how she ended up in Simon's house. I'm sure there's plenty of men in the world that don't know how their mother-in-laws ended up in their home too, but <laughs> this is what happened. There she is. But it begs a question. Perhaps Simon was a really good man. Maybe that mother-in-law's family was low income, didn't have enough food to feed all the mouths, and they couldn't take care of an elderly woman. Maybe that family had been taxed too heavily and sold into Roman slavery. We just don't know how the mother-in-law ended up in her daughter's home. But you get a sense for Simon, the fact that he took his mother-in-law in, the fact that his wife cared for her and loved her. You get a sense that he was a good man. He could have refused. I mean, it wouldn't have been kosher, but he wasn't, she wasn't his responsibility. But he took her in and loved her. And I get the sense that Simon had a good heart, just from that little piece. And the second piece, he starts following a man named Jesus. Perhaps when Jesus was dreaming of a better world, Simon got excited. Yes, this is what I was hoping for. 
Yes, this is what I was really wanting the world to become. And so he follows Jesus. But if we were to step back from this picture and put ourselves in the place of the mother-in-law, Simon following this new rabbi that's upsetting all the Pharisees, that's upsetting Rome even, that would not be a comforting thing for your male head of household to do. Here, this mother-in-law, we don't know what she endured, how she ended up in this home. She didn't stay in her married land. She didn't stay with that. She woes to this family. And now the head of the household is leaving them. And he's following a radical. If there's anything I know about mother-in-laws, they don't like change. This would be scary for her. This would be worrisome. And so there she is in old age, and we don't know her story, but we know something is amiss. Something in her story. And she is aging, her body is failing her, and she has a deep fever. They didn't have antibiotics or things like that, so you can imagine any number of illness. And the response of Simon when he brings Jesus to his home, I always kind of wonder in our sort of postmodern lens, when we hear of somebody being ill, like last week, my response is to isolate and keep my family, right? And stop spreading germs. But their response to Jesus is, come see my mother-in-law. She is ill. She is not well. And the words that Mark uses, and this is where I wish we all knew our Greek, but they're very pointed words. Lift up is the same one will be raised up from the dead. It is a preface to what is to come. And the way that her body isn't just healed like she's over the flu or she can breathe deep. She's fully healed enough to start serving that part always kind of annoyed me, though, to be honest. Um, as a woman, you know what it's like. It, so, for instance, I got sick. I brought it home to my family. Um, and immediately, my family gets ill. And then immediately, as soon as, or before, you start to feel better, you have to start serving them, right? <laughs> and it kind of bothers me to think about women. We're always like, oh, good. Let's restore woman to health so she can serve us. <laughs> So that part's always been a little iffy, but um, I have to remind myself that there were times that Jesus healed women and they didn't serve right away. Think about the woman, remember the woman that trails behind Jesus and secretly touches his clothing and her bleeding stops? In that scripture, Jesus tells her to live her life, re reconnects her with the community publicly and not in publicly uh, acknowledges that her bleeding has stopped and she's a clean woman, which is what affairs, you know, it's, it's what a religious person would have done. And in that scripture, that woman doesn't immediately go on and serve the world. But this one she does. Simon's mother-in-law immediately gets up and starts serving. I like her story, if I look through the lens, of someone who was given a second chance. Second chances in life are rare, right? If I but beat this cancer, if I can just do this. And sometimes people will make bargains with God, and God does not make bargains. Uh, we've been over this. But if you get that rare second chance in life, People are so much less likely to waste it, to not let it go idly by. I think about this in my own life. My second chance, I had a rough childhood, but I've oftentimes felt throughout my adult life, this is my great second chance. I have a great husband, a great family, kids, a great ministry. This is my second chance, and I want to live it to the fullest, to not let a minute Goodbye. So she's risen up, 
And she lives into that new life. It's a happy ending. It's one that calls us into hope. Earlier in Psalms, it says very pointedly that God doesn't delight in the fastest runner or the strongest horse. He's not cheering on the favorite Olympian. <laughs> he delights in those with steadfast hope. And I think he delights in those that are hoping for a better world. Those that are the dreamers. Those like Simon that take in their mother-in-law because it's the right thing to do. Those that believe we can love our neighbors and care for the sick and the broken. Those that think, sure, you might be that odd queer kid on the side roads who is lonely and sad, but come, dance with a group of pastors. Those who are the dreamers that think of a better world, that we could do better and be better and love more. That we won't be defined by our sins or the tape we stuck to ourselves. Remember that last week? God doesn't delight that we get it perfect or we get it right or we get the gold medal. God delights when we take our second chances and we live into them. When we don't get second chances and we firmly hold the hand of a dying loved one. And we just love them. And we say, I'll see you when we both rise. God delights in that. Something deeper, something more meaningful. It was clear earlier in the scripture, it reminds us that the demons knew Jesus because they are not embodied. They are simply spiritual elements. We had that talk about what's the fruit of the spirit, right? You can tell when it's coming on that end. If you're being mean or um, hurting your neighbor, that's not fruit of the spirit, right? These are energy. And even they can see the brightness of God. And they know when they've lost. Do you know when you've won? That's my prayer for you all this week. To remember that Jesus already won this battle. And this is our second chance. And all we have to do is live into it. And accept the blessing. And share in the love. Amen? Amen.